So this year there's been a lot of hype around new Dendro teams, new free to play teams, very accessible. And I was thinking about making a guide video on the original free to play God team. I did ask on my community post and, and I was quite surprised a lot of people were interested in it. I know National is such an old team now, but I'm hoping you'll still find some information that you might not know or you might have overlooked. So a summary of its strengths and why this national team works so well. Firstly, it's a fully four star team with OG characters. This meant it has always been there for veteran players, whether you are free to play or whether you've spent. Eventually, as you progress and you get more and more constellations of these characters, this team has always been there and has always been an option to play. Now, of course, these days, as more characters have been released and have entered the pool, banners have been diluted. So it isn't as simple to pull these OG characters now and their constellations. However, I will say you can still get C0 Shangling from the Abyss for free, C0 Xingqiu from Chinese New Year for free. Also, Bennett and Sucrose relatively don't have much need for constellations. They aren't that critical. And, and, and also a lot of the top weapons for this team, which I'll discuss later, they are they're either farmable or free to play friendly. Second lead is quite obvious at this point, but is that both these characters themselves and this team it really does exploit a lot of broken stuff, a lot of unintended mistakes from Mihoyo back in the day. So it makes this team a lot stronger than they possibly intended. But I'll get into these kinds of things more when I dive into each character. Also, if you want to know how the team performs in terms of speedruns, you may or may not be surprised, but it's still great after all this time. You could say it's a top performer for like low budget players who have only a few five star characters. You might only have a few or no five star weapons. You should know this team with its four star and three star weapons, it will still perform insane with that kind of account. And also surprisingly, I would say it still performs well up to mid budgets. Like even my account, I have a lot of the best teams for my 5 star main DPSs and a lot of them have their signature weapons. Some of these characters I even have maybe a C1 or a C2. I don't buy pre-mission packs in this game but I've been playing for a long time. But even with this kind of account, in a lot of Abyss cycles I can still get similar clear times with this national team. We can talk about the gear, it's very accessible. Like I said there was a lot of early mistakes that Mohoyo made and I would even say this abuses free to play weapons, which are very accessible. Stuff like Sack Sword, stuff like Drilling Tails, the catch, the fact that Bennett only needs high base attack weapons. So Xing Chou and Sucrose's best in slot weapons for this team are, are accessible. Xiangling's free to play weapon, which is the catch, which is farmable. It's very close to her best in slot weapons and kind of the same thing for Bennett. Sapwood Blade or Ali Flash or 4 stars. Sapwood Blade is craftable in fact and they are fairly close to his 5 star weapons. So with all this accessibility, usually this would imply that the ceiling for this team would be capped. However personally I would say that these weapons are just straight up very good and the way they function with these characters is just very good so, so I wouldn't really say it's an indicator of a capped ceiling. Obviously at a certain point it's not going to be able to compete with whale teams but you get what I mean. Also for gear, I would say that this team is fairly efficient to farm artifacts for. You can farm the emblem domain for Shang Ling and you can do it for Xing Shou as well although I wouldn't recommend it. During this farming you can pick up instructor pieces for Bennett and then any useless artifacts. You can strong box for VV sets for Sucrose and then noblesse sets for Xing Chou or Bennett but I prefer it on Xing Chou. So you could say this team you could just farm one domain for, which I think is pretty good. Lastly, I would say this team's playstyle holds up very well. I've noticed this playstyle has many attributes that as we've realized over time are common features for versatile Abyss teams. Let me explain more. For example, long flexible damage windows. Xingqiu and Changling's burst last very long times. And you can also reposition during this damage window because 
because of Xiangling's snapshotting mechanic, which I'll explain later on in the video. And Xingqiu's burst is a lot of damage without needing the snapshot too. Uh, it, this team also has access to a nuke, which is very important, which is from vaping Xingqiu's skill. Sucrose also has okay grouping, which is very important in AoE chambers. And lastly, it also has a variety of elements which can help with shield breaking. So let's get into the characters. So as I was thinking about this, you might be surprised, but if I had to put one star of the team, it might actually be Xing Chou. He might not be the star if you're just playing casually and mostly using him to apply Hydro for Shangling to vape. But the way I play, he is fully utilized. Essentially, he can play a pretty similar role to Child, but without Child's AoE. So in a nutshell, huge nuke potential and then sustained Hydro damage, which also boosts Shang Ling's damage. I'm not necessarily comparing them in terms of damage, but in terms of the role. However, one cool benefit Xing Chou has is that he can do all of this whilst using a supportive artifact set. See, I run him with the Noblesse set, which buffs the party's attack. And what this does is it also allows Bennett to use Instructor instead of Noblesse. You see, usually in these kinds of teams, Bennett just has to pick one. So compared to just Noblesse, the team has more reaction damage for both Xing Chou and Shang Ling. Also boosts Sucrose's EM. Her own EM share gets slightly bigger for even more reaction damage. Now this is a topic I don't think that many people will know because usually it's common that Xing Chou's best artifact set overall is Emblem for the increased burst damage. However, for me, if you play around Xing Chou's nuke, him on Emblem and the Noblesse on Bennett is actually less damage overall than Noblesse on Xing Chou and Instructor on Bennett. See, the nuke damage is way higher and the burst damage isn't that much weaker. And then he factored in more buffs to Shang Ling too is very beneficial. The other benefit, as I mentioned earlier, is this can make gearing the team more streamlined and potentially easier. Since Xing Chou and Shang Ling don't have to fight for the same pieces and you can gear him up from the strong box. The second part on Xing Chou that I think is a cool topic is the weapon. You might disagree, but I think Sack Sword on Xing Chou, it's his best weapon period. In this team, there's no real need to chase for a five star weapon. In fact, in a lot of my runs, I notice you don't necessarily need high refines on it, since if the Abyss Chambers are short enough, you may not need multiple skill resets per chamber. So you might ask, why is Sack Sword so good? It gives you access to two nukes. You might say calculations prefer Fab Sword. For example, say if a team Sack Sword calc is 45k, but a shorter optimized rotation with Fab Sword is 50k. That would mean on average it might be worse. But with two nukes, you can get some crits and they can have higher ceilings. This would also open up the flexibility and front loaded damage. Therefore, I would say it can outperform a spreadsheet in practice. Essentially, nukes are powerful. You don't want to be trading away your nuke potential. And if you're someone who speed runs, if you try speed running, you'll notice this. However, there's still some trade offs. So, why are people playing Fab Swords? Firstly, as mentioned, theoretically, fab weapons have shorter rotations, which usually gets improved sustained DPS. However, fab swords are also obviously good practically, especially in a team like this because it has fragile energy recharge requirements. Anyone who plays Shangling teams will notice this. And fab sword does help with team energy more than sack. So this can be an issue in situations. Like if you're short on energy, if you do build Xing Chou for nukes, then you might be forced to waste his skill on generating energy for him. And then this could snowball, since he's maybe messing with your buffs like Instructor or Noblesse. The best way to counter this is just to use lots of Bennett's skill whenever you can. Hopefully it doesn't steal a vape during Xiang Ling's Pyronado window, but, but it should help a lot with her energy. I'll also cover this in the setups and rotation section, but at the start of Chambers, if Xiang Ling is short on energy, you can use Guoba early. Xing Chou's artifact is very simple. Sack Sword gives a lot of ER by itself, so you don't need much more. I would say to aim for 180%, which makes it easy for two of his skills to fully recharge him. But that's my experience with his C6. 
So if you don't have that, you may need to go higher, maybe up to even 200%. Aside from that, just crit in attack substats. He doesn't really need EM, he's only reacting with his skill and there's a lot of EM buffs in this team, especially with Instructor on Bennett. So onto Shangling, why is she so broken in this team? And as usual with her, a lot of it is to do with Pyronado. It deals a ton of damage because she's snapshotting a lot of buffs in this team. If you're a newer player, snapshotting is a mechanic that was, you could say, a mistake from the original release, but it's not something they can remove now. It means some characters' abilities, and it's on a case-by-case -case basis. The game won't tell you this, but some characters' abilities keep their stats when it's originally casted, and it applies for both Shangling skill and burst. So it basically means whatever buffs she had when she first casts it, it doesn't matter if that buff was supposed to last maybe 8 seconds or 10 seconds, her abilities will keep the buffs for the full duration. And in Pyronado's case, it's for 14 second duration, which quite clearly isn't balanced since a 14 second duration attack should be dealing lower damage because it isn't able to get a lot of buffs, but clearly that isn't the case in Genshin. So yeah, with this team, Shangling has a huge amount of buffs. It's basically like a hyper carry team for her. Bennett's burst attack buff, Bennett's C6, Bennett with Instructor, Sucrose's EM share, Sucrose giving TTDS attack buff to her. Sometimes you can get Sucrose's C6 damage buff onto her, and then Xing Chou can get no bless onto her. And then obviously a huge vape multiplier from his Hydro. This, this kind of makes this team have Shangling's highest damage numbers possible, or at least close to it. Like unless you were to use Yelan in Sir Xing Cho, or maybe a C2 Kazwa with a weapon. But for a lot of players, this is the team that will have huge Shangling numbers. You can see this 100k damage here is, my build has around 210 ER on her with the catch free to play weapon and i only had just one abyss buff here which i think was 30 percent attack at high hp so this is clearly not a damage per screenshot build and just remember these numbers are in a combo with shincho's nuke and his own burst damage second reason why pyronado is broken is because versus big enemies or a skilled player versus smaller enemies they can get it to hit more times than it was supposed to be this obviously skyrockets the damage ceiling, especially if you can keep Hydro on the enemies, meaning you can get so many Vape Pyronators, it's quite ridiculous. I'll cover this more later on in the video. Lastly, another good thing about this team is that it's very quick swap friendly, meaning all the attacks are off field and they don't require one character on field, meaning it's a lot easier in this team than other Shangling teams for Bennett to use his skill a lot to generate energy for her. In terms of Shangling's gear, it's nothing special with this team, pretty similar to her most common teams. The catch is farmable and insanely strong. You can get this from fishing. You would only get a small upgrade with Scarlet Sands or Engulfing Lightning. However, if you do happen to have Engulfing Lightning, it is a lot nicer to play, especially with its extra energy recharge. The Emblem set is of course her best artifact set and I would aim for about 200% ER, if you, and if you got higher, then even better. And then aside from that, just as much crit, EM, and attack as you can farm. You may say that farming crit artifacts can take a long time, but as covered earlier, the emblem domain is the only artifact domain you really need to farm for this team. So eventually you can expect to get good artifacts. Uh, if you want a goal, I would say if you can count 32 or higher useful substats, so if you count each crit rate, damage, attack, energy recharge, EM roll as one good substat, then if you have 32 or more then your emblem set is great. I know some people can get up to 40, maybe even higher which is crazy. Just make sure you get the ER. I have heard a lot of guides might say she only needs about 160 or 180 ER. But I can tell you if you're doing full abyss runs, that little amount of energy recharge is eventually going to hurt you. On to Sucrose, she is straightforward but flexible. She buffs the team with a small amount of grouping. I use TTDS which is her best weapon here period and it's easy to get 3 star. If you're new, the way TTDS's buff works 
is the character you switch into after Sucrose, they will get this attack buff for 10 seconds. Which, as I've discussed about snapshotting, Shangling will actually get it for 14 seconds on our Pyranado. And this is a lot of attack. Sucrose also has her EM sharing talent. And also, it's not that necessary, but her C6 can also give further buffs. You might not use it all the time, but situationally, it can be quite helpful. Lastly, if you're new, just like all other Animo supports, she uses the VV set for huge debuffs. Now I spoke about her flexibility, and usually you give the TTDS buff to Shang Ling, but sometimes you can give it to Xing Chou for his skill nuke. You can see I use it here. And also, as mentioned, you don't always need to use Sucrose's burst, but it can give small buffs and also importantly, it can help with elemental application. For example, you can combine it with Goba and or Pyronado, and this creates a lot of consecutive pyro application for Xing Chou which can potentially let you vape four of his skill hits in a row with good timing. And then after that, you can even utilize the C6 pyro buff to snapshot it to Shangling's Pyronado to boost her damage moving forward. Sucrose's artifacts, if you want the minimums, it can be very straightforward. At a baseline, like most other Animo supports, it can just be any triple EM VV set you can get. You can farm this from the strong box using your leftover pieces. However, as a lot of people know, EM main stats are very rare, but eventually you can get it. Stacking EM on her will give her a good EM share buff. This is the EM I have, and you can leave it as this. However, if you're like me, you will try to min max, and you will add a lot of ER substats to make her burst more accessible. This isn't even that crazy. I have seen someone with 200% ER on a triple EM VV set, which is crazy. Bennett, his role is also very simple and he's very easy to build. He is the healer and attack buffer in this team and his actual personal damage doesn't matter. You just want the most amount of buffs and high energy recharge on him. To get the biggest attack buff, he does want a 5 star high base attack weapon like Aquila Favonia. However, I don't even have that. I just use Ali Flash which has over 600 base attack which is very good and you don't need refines on this weapon. Or if you don't have this, if you're free to play, you can craft Sapwood Blade, which has not much worse base attack, but it also gives ER, which is very helpful for him. You can then give him any instructor pieces with as much ER as you can get. The main stats here don't even matter much. So overall, Sapwood Blade and a cheap instructor set. This would be a perfectly fine finished build and you can concentrate on the rest of the characters. For key constellations for this team, you could say C4 on Shangling, C2 plus on Xing Chou, maybe actually all his constellations to be honest, but then luckily C1 on Bennett and then Sucrose's constellations are not that necessary, although they can help. So unfortunately, there's a lot of good constellations in this team. You could say for minimums, C4 Shangling, C1 Bennett, C0 Sucrose. But on Xing Chou, you really want as much constellations as you can, ideally C6. Also, Bennett C6 is very optional in this team. He does give a buff to Shangling's damage, but actually, it can be a bit of a hindrance, especially I've noticed for myself, because the pirate infusion he gives the characters can interfere with vapes unless you switch to Sucrose on field, which is what I end up doing. So let's bring this all together and here's an example setup. At the start of fights, use Xing Chou's burst. This gives you access to a source of hydro for Bennett and Sucrose to get their buffs out of without wasting Xing Chou's skill because you want to save that later for the nuke. This also activates his Noblesse buff and his C2 if you have them. After that, you would use Bennett's burst and you can add his skill if you want. Using his burst here will activate his buffs and because he does a vaporize hit, it will activate instructor for the team, giving the team EM. Sucrose then can ideally swell both Hydro and Pyro. You can use her skill, normal attacks, even her burst, whatever you need. 
and then you can pass a lot of buffs over to Shangling. And you then either want to time it or just get lucky. And if it is timed, then Xing Chou can make multiple hits in between all of these reapplications of Pyro. If your Xing Chou is well invested here, you will see quite big numbers. And then the actual rotation after this is very flexible and you can kind of do whatever you need to do. But getting all the buffs from the previous setup is very significant. And like I said, if you have Bennett C6 like myself, you will now have to spend a lot of time on Sucrose because the C6 gives pirate infusion to the rest of the team. When you normal attack with them to trigger Xing Chou's burst, their pyro attacks can easily put too much pyro on the enemies and Shangling will end up losing a lot of vapes. Whereas because Sucrose is a catalyst user, she will never get Bennett's pyro infusion for her attack, so it's safe for her. Also at this point, you can also do movement tricks to get Pyronator to get more hits. This is quite an advanced strat, but, but you could either dash anti-clockwise after Pyronator hits to make it kind of come back quicker, or you can dash clockwise just as Pyronator is hitting, which you can see it kind of drags it a bit and it makes it spend more time touching the enemy. This will let it hit twice in a row. I'm not entirely sure which is better, I do both, but I feel like anti-clockwise is better versus smaller enemies, you can easily dash and run around. Whereas I think clockwise is better versus bigger enemies, as it's a lot more intuitive to drag Pyronado alongside them. And then as you might have seen from previous videos, versus the biggest boss enemies, you don't really need to do either technique, since they are big enough, so it kinda similar to the clockwise movement. Pyronator naturally spends more time touching the enemy. You can see these back-to-back -back 100k hits. This is one of the things that really makes Shangling busted. Because Pyronator is her main attack, getting more hits from this is quite ridiculous. Here's a variation of the setup I use a lot. Similar to previous setups, but, but starting with Boba, this will help with Shangling's energy generation in case you don't have her burst back at the start of a chamber. This can also help you do Guoba Swirls, which is a rare technique. It's when Sucrose's skill can swirl Pyro on enemies to get her VV debuffs, even if the enemies still have Xing Chou's Hydro on them. Just note though that the timings for this can be quite tricky, and when you do these sort of fake Guoba Swirls, Without doing a proper pyro swirl on an enemy that had pyro on them, you don't get this bonus EM from Sucrose's Ascension 1 talent. Also, here's another variation where Sucrose gives TTDS to Xing Chou. It's effective here because I want to finish phase 1 of Magu Kenki without having to use Shangling's burst. Whereas if I use Shangling's burst at the start of this fight, there's a lot of downtime wasted during his transition phase. And with all that wasted time, it would mean I would have to use her burst twice to defeat this boss. Last topic I do want to cover is the downsides of the team. Firstly, optimal play can require a lot of skill. There's quite a few precise setups and it can take quite a bit of practice. And if you mess it up, you will be losing some big buffs. As you know, the setups can be quite flexible, but you still want to make sure you get these buffs. Also, this team can have energy issues, especially if you don't have one Favonis weapon in the team. And energy issues can mess with the buffs and damage in this team a lot. For example, if you have to waste Xing Chou's skill to battery him, you won't be able to use that skill later to nuke with. Also nowadays for a lot of people, another downside is that this team scales well with artifact and talent investment. In comparison, there's a lot of hype these days with Dendro teams that can have level 1 talents and EM artifacts with bad substats. And this definitely isn't that kind of team. However, personally, that can still be up for debate. I could say Sucrose can use EMVV pieces without great subsets, and Bennett can use random 4-star instructor pieces, Xingqiu can use strongbox noblesse pieces, 
so as I discussed in the beginning of the video, farming artifacts for this team can be a very streamlined process. You, you use emblem and then you strongbox. Then combined with the fact that a lot of these weapons are very accessible, so it really depends on your definition of what you think accessible is, what you think high damage floor is, or what free to play friendly is. Personally, I would highly recommend this team as long as you're not bored with it already. I do consider this team free to play friendly and very accessible, but you might have other opinions. Hope you found this video helpful. You might already know lots of this, but maybe one of the sections you didn't know. And thanks for watching.